Hi, I'm Dixon Tsai, and welcome to the ninth installment of Data Structures in 5 Minutes. Today we're going to be talking about sorting, and in particular, three algorithms. Of course, there are more, and we'll get to them, but I can only fit these three in 5 minutes. First one's insertion sort, second one's selection sort, third one's heap sort. I'm not going to talk about bubble sort because everyone knows it's inefficient. So, two properties that we might be really interested in for sorting algorithms is one, is the sorting algorithm in place? Well, an in-place sorting algorithm is one where little additional space is needed. So, these three that I'll be talking about are actually in-place algorithms. So, that's a great benefit about them. And stability. Is the algorithm stable? That means, do the repeating elements remain in the same order as the way they're inputted, when I um, go through the sorting algorithm. And you can see here that there's a 3 here and another 3 here, so I denoted it A and B. We'll see that for some algorithms, it will, um, the order will be swapped, and then we cannot guarantee that it's stable, which might be undesirable for some applications. So first, insertion sort and selection sort are both n-squared <coughs> running time algorithms on average. And both of them involve an in-place sort where there's a sorted part of the array and an unsorted part of the array. And the sorted part of the array is always sorted. That's the invariance here. So for insertion sort, we start with the array here. And we add to the sorted array one by one. So we first start with the six, of course. Then we want to add the first one in the unsorted array to the sorted array. So we need to see where we put the 5. We see that we have to swap spots. So this becomes 5 and this becomes 6. Then you see here that you have a 3 that you need to swap. And 3 goes before 5 and 6. Um, so it's 3, 5, 6. See here that you want to add the 1. The 1 goes in front. And you get 1, 3, 5, 6. And you can see how this is very laborious because I have to move all the elements. And you can see how the rest of it goes. Selection sort, on the other hand, you have the same empty sorted array at the beginning, but you look for the minimum um, number or the maximum, either works, and you put it into your sorted array. So, for instance, I want to find the minimum. All right, so I look here, one's the smallest one. I have to keep looking, I can't stop, because I gotta make sure one is the smallest element in the list. And then I swap it, and then I keep going. Where's my min, where's my min? Two is here, I have to keep going, and then I can be safe to put two here. Now, even though three is already in the right spot, I have to keep going until I find a minimum one. Oh, well, to make sure that this is a minimum one, and indeed it is. Sorry, I forgot to swap the 5 here. And so that's that. And you can see why these two algorithms are very slow. First one here is because you've got to move all the larger keys once you insert something in. Here, you've got to find the minimum key, which can be time-consuming. And so on average, these two algor algorithms run in O uh, theta of n squared on average. Now, if we take a look at the, an array that's already partly sorted, we can see that insertion sort is very fast. There's only one inversion here, while selection sort is slow, because you've got to make sure you have the min element. And so even in the best case, uh, insertion sort is n, but selection sort is n squared, which is very slow. Finally, we'll be talking about heap sort. Um, you should make the observation that um, the process that you use in selection sort can be made much faster given a uh, binary heap because uh, the main operations that we optimize is remove min, and so it's natural that we use this data structure to augment our selection speed. So first, what you need to do is you need to heapify or um, construct a heap out of the input array you're given. So here, you want the um, one, uh, sorry, the one doesn't need to be bubbled down. The 3a needs to be bubbled down. So the 2 and the 3a switch. The 5 and the 1 switch, of course, and the 5 and the 3b also switch. 
Finally, the 6 switches with the 1. Uh, then it switches with the 3B. Then it switches with the 4. Um, sorry, so if this is 4 and this is 6. So I had a clean copy here, pre-made. So this is um, the binary heap that you should have created from the bottom-up method. And so now what we have to do is we have to do um, n remove min operations, and each min, uh, remove min operation takes log time, so that will give us an n log n algorithm. And so fill in this array here by removing the 1, uh, putting the last element in here, which is the 5, and bubbling the 5 down. You should see that uh, the 5 goes down like this, and so you rewrite the heap in reverse order. Remember, uh, here, the sorted part goes first, and that has the minimum elements. The rest is the binary heap in reverse order. And so this is 6, 5, 7, 8, 4, 3A, 3B, and 2. Now we repeat the same process. 2 goes away, 6 goes on top. And what you see here is that your first choice of bubbling is the 3B here, so the 3b actually gets moved up instead of the 3a, and this becomes 4, and 6 is down here. So you get 1, 2, 5, 7, 8, 6, uh, 3a, 4, and 3b. And here is your first instance of seeing how this is not a stable algorithm, or it's not guaranteed to be stable. And so the rest you can fill out on your own time, and that is it for now. Next time I'll be talking about merge sort, and the, time, uh, and the next video after that I'll be talking about quick sort. Again, with a lot of examples, so all of this can be more concrete for you guys.